All right. All right, I'm going to get started. So this is lecture 29. And today we're going to continue talking about outbands. And we're going to talk a little bit about what happens when you assume that the op-amp is non-ideal. And we're also going to go over some examples. Um, yeah, so that's kind of today's topic. OK, so before we start, let's go through like a simple op-amp example. So just to, re just to recollect what we talked about on Friday, the operational amplifier is basically this little uh, triangle thing. I can draw a triangle. Dun, dun, dun. Minus plus, and then it's got kind of V out, V A, or V plus, V minus, and then you have I. And we said that the current coming into these two terminals has to be equal to zero. And also that the voltage plus has to be equal to the voltage minus. So those were the two rules for these operational amplifiers. And then we, last class we said that from that, we could basically analyze all amplifier circuits. So these two are the necessary conditions or equations that we need to be able to analyze these circuits. So to analyze this circuit here, we will label this node as the minus terminal of the voltage source, and then this node as the plus terminal of the voltage source. At that point, we can just simply uh, apply a KCL at each node. So here, let's try node B. So at B, we have that uh, VO minus VB over R2 plus VF plus minus VB over R1. Oh, and then what's the third term? Does anybody know? Yeah, zero equals zero. Um, now for the other node, so basically the node at node A, we have basically V, so we have basically zero minus V A plus over R2 plus B F minus minus uh, VA over R1, and that should be equal to zero. Okay, at this point, what do we know about BB and VA? Yeah, so they're the same because remember that B plus has to be equal to B minus, and so we can just set this to VA and VA. And then at this point, since we want to get it in terms of VF, which is just VF plus minus VF minus, we can just basically take this equation here and this equation here and uh, subtract them from one another. And so what we're gonna get here is effectively that D zero over R2. So basically we're taking this minus, so this equation minus this equation, so this minus this is V zero, this minus this is, so this minus this is it's actually equal to zero plus, and now we have this minus this, which is VF plus minus VF minus, and uh, well, it has to be divided by R one, and then this minus this is actually equal to zero. So that should be equal to zero. And at this point, uh, we can solve for the gain because it's basically VF plus minus uh, VF plus minus VF minus has to be equal to negative 
R1 be zero over R2. So effectively you move this to the other side and then you multiply by R1 and then you get what the gain should be. So I think this, this circuit is actually quite basic. The, the main kind of challenging thing here is that this voltage source here um, sits between two terminals. And if you try to analyze this sit without, uh, without uh, treating this as the minus terminal of VF and the plus terminal of VF, it can get pretty messy. Um, and that's really what made it challenging if you tried this at home. Uh -huh. But if you actually just label the two terminals, it's actually not that bad. Here I gave another approach, which basically uses uh, the BF. And to actually solve this circuit, you need a third equation. If you're, if you're going that route where you don't use these, you will need a third equation, which is basically the loop equation going around this loop, which basically says that VF minus I times R1 has to be uh, plus BA minus BB uh, minus I times R1 has to be equal to zero. So this is just a KCL applied around this loop. And of course, BA minus BB is just zero because BA equals BB. And then that gives you that I is actually BB minus B0 over R2, or sorry, that gives you that VF equals 2I R1. And then from that, you can actually uh, solve the, you can solve now using KCL for this circuit here, because this current is I and this current is I, negative I. And uh, yeah, so yeah, anyway. So basically, you can do the two node equations, subtract them, and then you will get the answer. But to analyze these circuits, the, the main kind of thing, other than being clever with solving circuits, is that the current coming in has to be equal to zero and the voltage VA has to be equal to the voltage BB, which equals one. Those are the two equations that you need. All right, let's start looking kind of a more kind of non-ideal and less problem solving. So we'll, we're first gonna analyze this simple circuit, which I think we've, ana actually, we didn't analyze this in the previous lecture, but this is kind of one of the most simplest circuits that you can solve. So here you have the positive terminal grounded, which means that the negative terminal will also be grounded. And then uh, at that point, you can just apply KCL at, the, at this node. And so you get basically VS minus zero, or sorry, zero minus VS over R1 is equal to V2 minus zero. So V, uh, sorry, zero minus V2 over R2. And uh, that should all sum up to zero because those are the only two currents. And then from that, you can just move the Vs to the other side and then take, find the ratio of V2 to Vs, basically. And then you end up with the gain of that circuit. Are there any questions on how to solve this? Yes, no. So basically, I just apply KCL here and got this equation. And once I got this equation, I solved for the ratio of V2 to v, Vs or Vn, V source. And that's all I did. So to do that, you just move V2 to the other side and then you multiply by R2 and then you're done. So you multiply by R1 and then you're done. R2, V2 to the other side, multiply by R2. Uh, Yeah, sorry. Move B2 to the other side and then, no. 
move Vs to the other side, divide by Vs, and then multiply by R2. So basically, you just solve this uh, this equation for the ratio of these two things. And for some reason, I just forgot how to talk. Um, yeah, so it's just some basic algebra. OK, so that's how we can analyze a, a basic operational amplifier. But the reason I brought up this example is not so much good. So we're always looking for like that V2 over Vs ratio, OK? Yeah, or the whatever sits on the left, so the input over the output. Okay, as things in the last example. Or, oh, I think it would be like Vf minus. Oh, okay, so yeah, yeah. I mean, I technically didn't finish solving it. So okay. you need to divide by Vo, and then you get that it's negative R2 uh, over R1. Sorry, R1 over R2. Oh, oh then. I think I'm having like some dyslexic tendencies today. <laughs> R1 over R2, sorry. <sighs> okay, it's one of those days. Okay, so. Yeah, so in here I actually wrote it. I just didn't do it because it's, yeah, but it should be VO over VF equals negative R2 over R1. So you're always trying to solve for what we call the gain, which is the ratio of the output to the input. All right. Um, okay, so we just analyzed the circuit, but remember, if you recollect from the previous lecture, what we said is that this thing here, this op amp, the equivalent circuit actually looks something like this. Um, so basically, like uh, this thing in the box. And what we said that's that why it's ideal, it's because we assume that this input impedance or Ri is actually equal to infinity. And we assume that this gain is actually equal to uh, infinite. And so basically if you assume these two things so that the gain is infinite to this voltage control, uh, sorry, yeah, voltage control, voltage source, and this uh, input impedance are infinite, that actually gives you what we call a operational amplifier. <laughs> but of course, when you go to lab and you try to build this, in reality, K is not infinity. K is just some large number. And your input resistance is also not infinity. It's some large number. And so as long as the effective gain of, of the whole circuit is low enough, this thing will basically behave like, a, like this. But as soon as you start pushing a gain of the circuit that's close to the actual K or the gain of the amplifier, then you're no longer gonna, it's no longer gonna behave like ideal. So just to give you some example here, the gain would be negative R2 over R1, which in this case, it's five. But let's say we put a five mega ohm here, then the gain would actually be 5,000. If this K was like 4,000, this analysis would break down basically. You, you, and we're actually gonna see what, how bad it is in the next few slides, because we're going to actually analyze this circuit, which is actually the same circuit that we just analyzed, where you have the R2 here, and then you have the R1 here. But now we can no longer assume that I equals zero coming into here. It's just going to be small. And uh, we can no longer assume that this voltage, the B plus, equals the V minus. We actually have to solve for it. So basically, let's just very quickly analyze the circuit using our 2K1 techniques and see what we get for the gain of this circuit. All right, so just as before, we're going to apply KCL at the nodes. So we're going to have here this. And so we're going to have VA minus VF. V, sorry. Yeah, let's do this that way. VA minus VF over R1 plus VA 
minus V2 over R2. And now we're gonna have a third term because now there, there is a current going into here. So we're gonna have plus VA, uh, let's put it around here, minus, yeah, and if I put the ground here, this is just VI, so I'm just gonna call it VI. VI, VI, over RI. Okay, so that gives me that node equation. And uh, yeah, so now we have our node equation. And so if we look here, we have to get rid of VI, which we don't know. That should be good. Oh, actually, not VI, sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's two. Where's B2? This is. Mm -hmm. Pulling this V2 and then there's VR. And we need another equation, which I'm gonna basically, okay, yeah, so we did this node equation here. All right, so basically now we need to do, so this is the equation that was on the previous slide, except it's written in terms of BA, which is just equal to BI. Um, and now we need this node equation here and that node equation tells us actually that uh, V2, right, is actually just equal to, okay, yeah, K times negative K times VI or VA, it doesn't really matter because VA is VI. Um, and uh, that, that's just basically saying that this thing here is equal to this thing here. Um, so it's just KVL applied around this loop, if you want to call it a loop. Uh, or it's just saying that the voltage drop between those two terminals is negative KVI. Okay, once we have this, wherever we see a V2, now we can just replace it with KV, negative KVI in this mm -hmm. equation. And now we're good to go because we have an equation that will have V2s and uh, VSs, basically. Uh, where do we see a V2? V2, V. Yeah, so we need to get rid of the VIs. So basically, wherever we see a VI, we're gonna plug in V2 over VK because this is the input V2. Okay. So now we get V2. So basically wherever there's a VI, we're just gonna replace it with negative V2 over K. So here we plug in negative V2 over K. Here we plug in negative V2 over K. Here we plug in V2 over K. And then we end up with this thing that looks pretty ugly, but at the end of the day, we have a bunch of V2s and we have a VS and now we can find the gain. So you just move all the VS terms to the other side, factor out all of the V2 terms. And now we have what the gain for the circuit is, which, well, yeah. So as you can see here, um, the gain is actually quite different for the non-ideal case than it is for the ideal case. Uh, can anyone kind of see what the clear difference is? No, yeah, yeah. So before we had that the gain, if this is if this is this triangle thing, the gain was actually V2 over Vs equals negative R2 over R1. Now we have R2 in parallel to all of these other kind of uh, equivalent resistances, that is our gain. Now, if I assume that all of these things are large, sorry, that all of those things, oh, sorry, that all of these things are small, which means that each of these factors are large, what would that uh, mean? What would that lead me to? Yeah, so we would get a, our ideal gain. 
So basically, if we, if we plug in here infinity for k, which is the gain, we would actually go back to our old expression of r2 over r1. Now, if k is actually much greater than, so if k is much greater than r2, then that means that all of these terms would be much smaller than our i, sorry, than our, than uh, one over r2. And so in that case, we can ignore it. So we're already starting to see that if k is big, we're gonna kind of collapse back to our original gain. Okay, so now that we analyzed the circuit, I hope you're convinced about this. It's really not that complicated of a circuit. You have three currents here, which I basically in the previous, I labeled since this is VA, which is just equal to VI. You have those three currents, and then you basically say, well, I can relate this V2, which is my output, to this KVI by uh, simply looking at what the voltage drop through here is, which is just V2 equals, because of the polarity reversal, it's just negative KVI or KVA. And then um, all I did basically was then Wherever I saw a VI, which is the input to the amplifier, I replaced it with V2 with, I replaced it with a negative V2 over K. And then I, this equation became this equation. And then I just moved the S's to the other side. So it's actually quite basic derivation, or I hope it is. Um, but we got this game that looks much more complicated. And now what I'm gonna do is actually just plug in different values for K and RI, and then see how my gain looks. So here I actually plotted in a table for the original circuit. So if you remember the original circuit had the 5K and then 1K, and then I plotted the ratio uh, the gain for this circuit as k increases. And what you start to see is that basically, if the actual gain of the amplifier is one, then you actually get less than one gain. If the gain is 100, now you're getting closer. If the gain is a uh, 1,000, now you're like a 4.97. And then by the time you're 10 to the five, it's four point, negative 4.9997 volts. So we can see that actually the, as long as the gain is basically about, what is this? So the actual gain was five. So here's 10 to the zero, here's 10 to the one. So this is five. So as long as the gain is about 10 to 100 times, I would say 100 times bigger, then you start uh, getting pretty much idealistic uh, behavior. But if it's not, then you run into problems. Uh, yeah, so here's kind of that one example. So now what happens if I increase the gain? So I made this new one with where I increase the resistance to be 50 kilo ohms as opposed to 5 kilo ohms. So now that ideal gain would be 50. And you can see that that graph now becomes kind of, it, start, it converges at higher K basically than before. So here it's falling at 10 to the four. In the previous slide, it, fall, it fell at 10 to the three. And then, um, yeah, so oh, actually I had it here. So you can see the difference between these two graphs basically. Um, so we haven't actually gone over this because we, flipped around the class. So this shoot, this typically we cover after we go over amplifiers, but you did do this in your lab. If you're taking 2KA, you design one of these circuits. Um, and so what you found was that the actual gain of the little triangle thing is actually equal to this, uh, where you have something that's in the order of 10 to the four, actually, sorry, it's not equal to this, it's equal to this. Um, where these are some parameters of the MOSs that you used. 
And uh, these are some things you calculated in your, when you do this analysis. And this thing tends to be in the order of 10 to the four. Um, so in particular, when you buy these things in the data sheet, what you're gonna get is actually what the, uh, what the, uh, re the rejection mode gain is, or the different the, the gain to the difference of this voltage is. We call that AD. And of course, the higher that is, the more expensive the amp is because it's gonna need more components. Um, and so you kind of have to be cognizant of how much gain you actually need so that you don't kind of over-engineer things because then things become ex unnecessarily expensive. But additionally, something we didn't really talk about, or actually, and they don't, we don't actually cover in this class. There's this other this this other common mode gain, which means uh, how much is an the average of the signal amplified, and that's actually very uh, this is very parasitic because if I have a system. And these two terminals kind of all have kind of a three on it. What is, okay, I guess, what is the thing that would be common if I put an input to this? What is the thing that would be common to both inputs? Yeah. Noise. Yeah, exactly. So they're both exposed to the same noise. So what this tells you is that if I have a noise signal, which will be common to both inputs, how much that noise signal gets amplified and you don't want to amplify noise. And so this, what we call the common mode rejection ratio actually gives you an idea of how much signal to noise ratio you need at, at the input side uh, before you can amplify basically. So this is kind of, this is also an important thing. If you want high common mode rejection because you're in a noisy environment, then um, you're gonna have to pay more money basically. So just, just to give you an example, um, I actually have some good ones. So at, back when I was at Duke, we, we used to do a lot of uh, monkey experiments. And uh, so there's this monkey and then he has this little, like you put a little hole in their skull and then you insert a probe to measure the brain activity. And then you have the monkey kind of do something. <laughs> and then you basically use an oscilloscope to see the brain signals. But we were really nice to the monkey, so they were very happy. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> anyway, but th this is actually, uh, so, so then you basically take a TMS coil and you stimulate the monkey with a magnetic field. <laughs> <laughs> and then once you basically you can see kind of like what the brain response is to this like a electromagnetic pulse but this is a big problem.